so we're going on guitar safari. We're going on guitar safari. We're going to get Elvis. We're going to get Elvis and go. Oh, it's Elvis. Oh, look, it's Elvis. Ah, oh, oh, it's Elvis. Oh, we're going on guitar safari. Ah, ah. Impressions. Sounds like a McCarty, holy shit. a beautiful top on it um is that it has this wraparound bridge and i just really like i cannot stand wraparound bridges um the only guitars that i've ever been able to play that have them are the um like the gibson um oh what the fuck are they called um the um uh juniors um and like really like even then it's only a novelty thing like i only like it because it it's a junior you know um this is beautiful though it's that kind of like um like amber sunburst kind of thing like a gibson amber sunburst kind of um it's got a flame maple top on the headstock which is just beautiful um
afford it. But hey, it doesn't hurt to guitar safari when you're a guitar safari. You know? That's the other thing I'm noticing about it is even though it's the same body width and the neck is the same, um, it's slightly thinner sounding and I don't know if that's because of the pickups that are in it. Maybe these coil tap. No, they don't coil tap. <laughs> detract from how beautiful it is um, I'm also not going to detract from the construction because it's very very well built um, it's like it's an actual like rosewood rosewood fingerboard as well it's not like Pau Ferro or ebony or something um, and I love the linen burst on it but Jesus man like the tone's just not there um, for me um, I um, mean, custom built for the USA only. That's something I really love about PRS guitars is like they have this like handwritten, you know, kind of like back in the Kalamazoo days of Gibson. Um, they would hand engrave everything on the back. Um, you know, it, it's it's the thing about PRS, man. Like it's you can it when you when you find one, it's like you pick every single one of them up and they're all awesome. But like the thing with guitars are, you know, if you don't absolutely love it and you don't fall in love with playing it when you're still in the buying process of it, um, then you're probably not going to take it home. Um, but yeah, this is the McCarty Five Nine Four. Um, believe it's a a nod to Mr. McCarty who used to work at Gibson um, where Paul learned most of his uh, his um, his craft and the integrity that he has towards the craft from um, but yeah so it's a cool guitar it's at Carter's Vintage it's $3,800 uh, if you got 3800 bucks alright so um I was gonna make this video longer but for whatever reason uh, my video editor uh, doesn't allow me to upload anything longer than 15 minutes which I think is kind of bullshit um, but uh, I wanted to do my top three from uh, Guitar Safari today um, I think the, uh, the the guitars that I liked the most uh, and I think I, I think it'll be an amp and one two guitars. So uh, the amp uh, that I'm talking about is the man. It just had a killer tone for like everything that you know I was playing today. Um, 
I kept it on the same settings the entire time, which was the high gain setting. Um, I'm actually considering going back and buying that amplifier, um, if it's still there when I, when I get paid. Um, but uh, yeah, it's the uh, the Marshall DSL-40 uh, limited edition white combo. Man, it just had like all of the fucking Randy Rhodes vibes. Um, it matches my 2x12 Panama cab that I have. Um, it's just a mean, gnarly sounding, just disgusting, mean sounding, distorted amplifier. Um, so that's the, I guess, in no particular order, um, the first pick, um, or, or mention, I should say, uh, that I want to bring up. Uh, the next one is, um, the McCarty 245, uh, single cut. Um, man, that thing was just nice. Uh, it was just a really nice, um, you know, um, really, really nice guitar. Uh, even though it had the wraparound tailpiece, uh, it's something I'd be willing to get over, um, for, you know, just, just the, how nice that guitar actually was. It had the, it had a tin top, you know, it had the right color. Um, it was just a beautiful guitar. Uh, and then finally, my last pick would be the first guitar in this video, which is the the um, the Axis model. It had a roasted maple, roasted flame maple neck, which I didn't get a whole lot of footage of that. Um, you can kind of see it in the in the video where I'm playing it. Um, but yeah, that thing was nice. It had a beautiful quilt maple top, mahogany body. It was extremely light. Uh, which was surprising to me and like as I'm like starting to get older and starting to like uh, you know get pain just for you know being awake and alive um, <laughs> that's kind of a that's kind of a factor um, is weight in guitars um, where I still have that sort of mentality where like the heavier the guitar the more sustain um, you know, the weight of guitars is still starting to kind of become a factor to me. Um, so yeah, my number three pick would definitely have to be, uh, the Axis model that I played today. Um, man, I cannot express to you how much I did not care for that, um, uh, McCarty, uh, 594, um, it just, I was not vibing with it. It was a custom, uh, custom, uh, I think the artist package, excuse me. Um, but you know, I, I don't really care about all that clout as far as like, oh, it's an artist package or oh, it's a 10 top. Like, it, like I kind of said in the video, like if it's, it doesn't matter how expensive a guitar is, if I'm not, if I'm not vibing with it, it's, it's not coming home with me. Um, but yeah, uh, with a $3,800 price tag on it, that's kind of, I think that's ridiculous. I think any $3,800 guitar, any guitar that you're going to drop three grand on, almost four grand on, um, you, you should absolutely find nothing wrong with it. And to me, those, those pickups were just thin sounding and, you know, just the guitars, feel overall just was not vibing with me um lord i don't know what's going on with my eye but anyway um yeah those are my top three picks um and i guess one detractor from today um man my name is harrison fox i'm the neurotic fox and doodles